All right, everybody. In this video, we're going to continue our code speed up series with a technique called loop hoisting. Now, loop hoisting is not a technique that's very difficult to understand, but I still think that it's something that even the most experienced software engineers can overlook from time to time. So it's going to be important to talk about it a little bit. First of all, let's give a context so we're not just talking about coding for coding's sake. Let's say we're doing some image processing. And we have this image, which is 700 pixels wide by 700 pixels tall, and it's some little creature right here. Now, our goal is to do some kind of normalization on this image. And by normalization, we mean that, let's say we're talking about a specific pixel, let's say the one that's pointed to by the red arrow. So some pixel that's part of the creature's hand, maybe. Now, this pixel belongs to a row, a row of pixels. And this row of pixels has a mean and a standard deviation. Let's say the mean of the row of pixels is mu. Let's say the standard deviation of the row of pixels is sigma. And let's say that the value of the pixel that we care about right now is x. Now, as you might see coming, we're going to nor uh, normalize it or standardize it by just doing x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So you'll remember this formula from your statistics classes as the z-score normalization. Um, pretty simple to understand, OK? And we want to do this for every single pixel in the image. So for any given pixel, that pixel belongs to a row. We're going to take the mean of the pixels in that row. We're going to take the standard deviation of the pixels in that row. And we're going to do this simple transformation to normalize the entire image. So hopefully the idea is clear. Let's look at this uh, code which I proposed. And let's see if it's correct. And if it is correct, let's see if it's efficient or if we can make it faster. So let me explain the code as I've written it. We have a double for loop. One is looping through all of the rows. So the row is given by i for row in 1, 2, all the way to the 700th row. The inner for loop loops over all of the columns given some row. So j from 1 to 700 again. So these two for loops together just iterate over every pixel in the entire image. Now for any given pixel, we have a couple a uh, little bit of work to do. We'll calculate the mean of the row that the pixel belongs to. So this my image at index i is basically saying give me the ith row of my image and take the mean of it, store that mean in this variable called row mean. Do the same thing for standard deviation. For the ith row of the image, take the standard deviation and store it in a variable called row sd, row standard deviation. And then simply for this given pixel, just take it, subtract the mean of its row, divide by the standard deviation of its row, and store that transform value back into the pixel. And that should solve my problem, right? It seems reasonable. It seems like we're doing exactly what we outline mathematically. But when we stop and think about the code and think about where these two statements are living right now compared to where they should actually be living, we start to see some problems. Um, there's definitely an efficiency concern, which you might have seen already, but there's also first and foremost, a correctness concern. This code isn't actually going to work the way we think it's going to work. And why is that? To, to, to look at that, let's look at a given row. Let's say we're dealing with some row of pixels. And of course, there's 700 pixels in that row. For the first pixel in that row, there's actually not a problem. Because we're going to come into these two for loops. We're going to calculate the mean of this row. We're going to calculate the standard deviation of this row. And we're going to reset the first pixel as its transformed value. No problem. Now what happens with the second pixel? With the second pixel, we come back inside these two for loops. We recompute the mean of the row and the standard deviation of the row. But notice these values have changed. They're not the original mean and standard deviation of that row before we did anything. They've changed slightly because since we changed that first pixel, we've edited these values ever so slightly, which means that the new normalized value of that second pixel isn't going to be exactly correct. And the problem just gets worse and worse and worse. As we move to further pixels down this row, we're basically taking into account all the transformed values in this row from before, rather than the original values, which we wanted to do. And so that as we progress through this row, we're just getting more and more wrong results um, as we go forward. So that's the correctness issue. And the efficiency issue also is very tied to this. The efficiency issue is this. We come inside these two for loops, and we compute a mean, and we compute a standard deviation. Now notice these both are just functions of i, which makes sense, right? Because we're saying the mean of the row and the mean of the standard deviation is known once you know what the row is. You don't need to know what column you're in, according to what we're trying to do here. So why is it that we're calculating these 700 times when you, all you need to know is the row? As soon as you know which i you're in, you can go ahead and compute these two guys and then use those two values for every single column that you're in. In fact, by doing it this way, not only are we wrong in our final result, we're also very inefficient. 
because we're calculating rho mean and rho standard deviation 700 times. We're uh, basically 700 times for each row we're in, even though we should just calculate it one time. So here's where the hoisting part comes in. We're going to take these two statements here and hoist them out to this level of the two for loops, which means right after we know which row we're in, right after we pick our i, we're going to calculate the mean and standard deviation of that row and use those values inside this part of the for loop, which still is nested two layers deep. And so that solves our efficiency problem because we're not calculating something 700 times anymore. We're just calculating it one time per row. And it also solves our correctness issue. Because now when we do this transformation, we're using the row mean and row standard deviation that were calculated at the very beginning, as soon as we knew which row we were in. So we are not updating these values over time. They're fixed once we know the row, and then we use that value over and over and over again. So now we're doing a true normalization rather than this problematic normalization from before. So hopefully that was easier, uh, easy for you to see how hoisting some set of statements from one level of a nested for loop to some level above or some levels above if you have like three or four nested for loops can really help speed up your code and also solve these correctness issues that are not always easy to spot. But um, don't take my word for it. Let's go ahead and look at the code and see what kind of speed ups we can achieve. All right, so let's take a code look at how loop hoisting can help us speed up our code. Uh, we're going to be using Python again for this analysis. We're doing some image processing type stuff, so kind of exciting. Let me go through the imports. So we're going to import matplotlib.image as mpimg. This helps us read and write images. NumPy helps us deal with lists. Time is going to help us measure the time of each one. And matplotlib.pyplot as plt helps us show images again. So first thing, we'll read in this image called uh, mouse.jpg. We show the image. So this is the image we'll be working on. Let's look at the dimensions. It's a 700. Uh, 700 pixels by 700 pixels by three channels. So if you're not familiar with how images work, this picture is 700 pixels uh, tall or long, 700 pixels wide, and each pixel has three values, red, green, and blue. And different combinations of those values give you the different colors you're seeing in the image. So it's not too important that you understand that, but it is cool. Um, so attempt one. Remember, we're trying to normalize each pixel relative to its row. So we go ahead and create a copy of this image so we don't act on the original one. We start the timer and we see this double for loop as we did before. So for i in range 700, so going over all the rows, going over all the columns with our j in range 700, we get the mean and standard deviation pixel values of that row. So we get row mean is equal to the mean of this row's pixels. So my img with the subscript i means give me the entire row. So that's 700 pixels of any given row in the image. We get the mean of that row's pixels. We also get the standard deviation of that row's pixels. Why do I add this 0 0.001? The reason is because if the standard deviation is zero, when I try to divide by it, I'm gonna have a bad time. So we just give it a little bit of extra boost. Um, and then we scale this pixel by its row's mean value. So we say that in uh, the copy of our image, that new pixel at ij is going to be the original pixel at ij minus the row mean divided by the standard deviation of the row. So you can think of this as a z-score kind of thing in your stats class or just a normalization type thing, um, however you want to think about it. So we do that for all of the pixels. We measure how long it took, and this run took about 56 seconds to get its work done. Now remember, there's a big inefficiency here. When we calculate the row mean and row standard deviation, they're only functions of i, yet I'm calculating them for every single j even when i is fixed. So in the first iteration when i is zero, then j goes from zero to 699. I'm calculating row mean and row standard deviation this 700 times, even though I only had to calculate it one time once my i was zero. So that's where we're going to speed it up. Oh, and just uh, before I go to the speed up, if we show what that image looks like, it looks like this. So it looks kind of like a negative maybe. So attempt two is normalize each pixel relative to its row again. The only change we make is we take those two lines, which were happening in every iteration of these two for loops, and move it out one layer so that it's only happening once based on when i changes. So if i is zero, we calculate the row mean and row standard deviation for the uh, zeroth row or the first row, I guess. And then we calculate this my image copy ij using those values for every single j from zero to 699. That's the only change we made. We calculate the time again. We see that we went from almost a minute 
to just about three seconds. So we're getting a crazy speed up here um, as well. And we show the image, we see it's the exact same image we got before. So the correctness is true in both cases. It's just that in one case, it took us about 20 times faster. All right, so this is just a quick idea of how loop hoisting can help speed up your code. And until next time.